Now you're, you know, you're a prol prolific, prolific author. You've got many books out at the moment. So I've been doing some historical reading of how we wrote about gold in the 1970s when uh, Nixon removed the gold backing from the US dollar. So I've got some really old gold books here. It's interesting how they talk about gold and how, you know, when these books are written in the early 70s, uh, inflation and stagflation hadn't yet taken hold of the US. Then we've right. got a new case for gold that you wrote. Now, I would say, having read these ones, this book perfectly encapsulates what happened in the 70s. However, you're really still making the same argument to own physical gold in this book from uh, these books that I've been reading that were written 50 years ago. Tell me, how have people decoupled from understanding gold? And obviously, I think they should actually go get your book so they can understand even more so why they should um, own physical gold. But how did we decouple over the past 50 years from understanding the importance of gold in our portfolio to now less than 1% of Australians own it? Right, that's a great question, Shay. And, and I do uh, cover that in the book, The New Case for Gold. I, I keep thinking that archeologists will unearth some site in near ancient Babylon and we'll find the old case for gold. We'll find Clay <laughs> Tablet talking about the benefits of gold. I'm not sure the argument has changed much in, in, in uh, three or 4,000 years, but, um, but, but here's what has changed. Um, I talk about gold bull markets and gold bear markets. And I start my analysis in 1971 and I don't have to go through all, the, all that data, but that's, that's how I think about it. And you're like, well, Jim, why 1971? Why not before that? And of course, 1971, as you point out, Shay, was when Nixon uh, stopped redeeming dollars for gold. It was over. The Americans couldn't. Americans couldn't even own gold in 1971. It was contraband. It was like drugs or you know machine guns or something. But foreign trading partners could redeem dollars for gold up until 1971. And then Nixon said no more. And then that was the final decoupling. But prior to that. Um, Gold was actually money. In other words, uh, with under Bretton Woods, gold was pegged at $35 an ounce. Prior to Bretton Woods, it was pegged at um, $20.67 an ounce. So we've gone back to the 1920s or earlier through most of the 19th century. For the United States and sterling, I think it was $4.75. It could be off a little bit on that, but you know, four, four pounds and, and change. Um, and as late as World War One, say 1913, if you were a Brit and you were getting on the steamer from London to, you know, at the time Bombay, today Mumbai, um, you took a purse of uh, British sovereigns. British sovereign is it's about uh, about eight grams, a little bit less. You know, it's not an ounce; it's a quarter ounce because an ounce is almost too much. Even even today, what are you going to do with a one ounce coin? It's worth you know almost two thousand dollars. Uh, you know, you're not going to use that for to buy a pack of gum. But but in the day, there was the quarter ounce, which today would be you know like a five hundred dollar bill. So it's still a significant amount of money. Uh, but you could get on the steamer in Southampton and get off in Bombay at the time, and it was money good. You could take that British sovereign and spend it anywhere. And same thing in Singapore and Hong Kong and Japan or all around the world. So gold was actually money. So it wasn't a question of oh, what's the exchange rate? It was the gold was the money and people thought about it by weight. They said, oh, a sovereign, that's eight grams of gold. So that's worth, you know, that'll get you whatever. So, uh, and that was true throughout history. And so it's really only since 1971, when we decoupled completely in terms of an exchange rate that you have to think about, um, uh, you know, well, what's the dollar price of gold? Because it's not fixed, but but okay, well, what happened to the memory? What happened to the 3000 years I just talked about? Well, the answer is it happened in stages and it actually took, it took about 75 years. So it began in 1914. 1914 was the outbreak of World War I. Everybody needed gold. There was a, there was a run on gold um, and countries needed gold because they knew they would need gold to pay for the war to try to win the war. Well, it didn't matter if you're Germany, UK or whoever. And remember the United States was neutral. The United States did not get in the war until 1917, the war started in 1914. So for those first two and a half years, New York was a money center to all of Europe, to, to all the belligerents. Uh, so everyone scrambled for gold. So if you were a citizen, you hand it, they asked you to bring your gold to the bank and they gave you paper money. And but people did it out of a patriotic, it's existential. War is not a normal market. You're gonna, if you lose the war, you got bigger problems than your gold. And so people put the gold in the banks. What did the banks do? 
they melted it down and made 400 ounce bars. And they said, don't worry, your money's backed by the gold. We keep using that paper money, uh, but it's redeemable for gold. But oh, by the way, they're 400 ounce bars. Nobody walks around with a 400 ounce bar in her purse. I'm sure you've seen one and I have as well. They're, they're heavy, they weigh about 35 pounds. You don't walk around with them. So all of a sudden the, the gold was still there and the paper money was backed by gold in theory, but the gold had disappeared into the banks. That's step one. Step two, and this happened in the 1930s, the central banks took the gold from the commercial banks. So first the commercial banks took the gold from the people. Then the central banks took the gold from the commercial banks and the Federal Reserve System sold all the banks. Hey, send your, send your gold to the regional Federal Reserve Bank. And of course, most of it went to the Federal Reserve Bank in New York. So now it's not even in the banks anymore, right? But you're still walking around thinking your paper money is somehow attached to gold, but people haven't seen gold for a while, uh, unless you're a collector. Step three, uh, the United States Treasury and the finance ministries took it from the central bank. The 1934, the United, the United States Treasury seized the gold of the Federal Reserve System. Bearing in mind, the Federal Reserve System is privately owned. Um, and they gave them a gold certificate. And you go to the, um, the Federal Reserve System website today and you know hunt around a little bit on the links and find the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve and it's there and look on the look in the assets and the first line item is gold certificate and it's valued at 11 billion dollars but that's because they value the gold at 42 dollars an ounce if you and i've revalued it the answer is that today's market that that 11 billion is actually worth 470 billion so the fed has a hidden asset of 450 odd billion that's not on the balance sheet represented by a gold certificate but it's not the gold. The treasury has the gold. And by the way, where do we keep our gold? I'm talking about the United States. The treasury owns the gold. The Fed has a paper certificate. Um, the gold is on two army bases, West Point and Fort Knox. So I would say the army has the gold. Uh, but 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 my point uh, is that the gold has gone from citizens walking around having it in, in your purse to commercial banks, to central banks, to finance ministries held on an army base it's still there. The gold didn't disappear, um, but nobody talks about it. And everyone pretends it's not money, but of course it's money. Um, but, but meanwhile, what's happened to this, the, the, the civilian population, the citizens? We stopped talking about it. We stopped saying it. We stopped learning about it. I remind people, I, you know, just showing my age, but my, I got a graduate degree in international economics and I was class of 74. But that was the year the IMF demonetized gold. But I was the last class that was taught gold in an academic setting as a monetary asset. Uh, if you know, if you're younger than I am and you know anything about gold, you're either self-taught or you went to mining college because they just stopped teaching it. So now we have two generations of scholars who never learned a thing about gold.